Hi, this is JB from Not the Lights Over Arkham. This time on Hero Pack Focus, we are looking what cards come in the Scarlet Witch Hero Pack. We'll go through the pre-built Justice deck, the Nemesis deck, and also the other aspect cards that come in the pack. So let's get started. So let's start by looking at the Alter Ego side of Wanda Maximum, aka Scarlet Witch. So Wanda Maximum has uh, three recovery. She is a mystic. Super powered siblings action. Discard two cards from your hand. Draw two cards or draw three cards instead if Pietro Maximov is in play. Limit once per round. So it is the same ability that Quicksilver's Alter Ego has. So they combo off of each other, being the super powered siblings. The hand size is six cards and Wanda has 10 hit points. And the hero side is Scarlet Witch, Sword of 2, Attack of 1, Defense of 2, Avenger Mystic, Chaos Control, Interrupt. When boost icons on an encounter card would be con uh, counted, discard the top card of the encounter deck and count the number of boost icons of that card instead. Limit once per phase. Okay, well, uh, that ability feels quite good if you're hitting a maybe three boost icon and you feel like you can't handle that and you want to maybe hit something less, you can try your luck and try to control the <laughs> chaos, so to speak, to get a card with less boost icons. So uh, the hand size is five on the hero side, so pretty pretty normal. Okay, well, uh, the hero card doesn't really offer that much information on how Scarlet Witch plays, so let's start looking at the other cards. First we have uh, Quicksilver. Quicksilver is the uh, Pietro Maximov for cost ally with one sword and two attack. Avenger for hit points, action ready Quicksilver, limit once per phase. And Quicksilver can be committed as a wild resource. So Quicksilver Hero is quite similar to Quicksilver uh, Ally, so that you can ready it once per phase. Uh, the Ally version is uh, focused more on attacking with two attack so right away if you would have like boot camp for example in play you could boost the attack to three or some other attack boosting card and hit for six damage so you could do some combos with quicksilver but of course uh, building a deck around the signature ally is a Dif difficult task, you can do it, but uh, it's only one card in your deck, so you have to be able to find it. But let's continue and look at next Chaos Magic. So this card got some early boss going on. Let's read the card. So Chaos Magic is a zero cost event spell, superpower, hero action. Play a card from your hand, ignoring its resource cost. Discard cards from the top of the encounter deck equal to the card's printed resource cost, and it can be committed as a wild resource. So, uh, right away, obvious combos with this card is to play, for example, Avengers Mansion or Nick Fury or Heimdall or something really expensive for zero. And the only downside is that you are accelerating the encounter deck. So, you will be getting those um, acceleration tokens on the main scheme faster. I think in a true solo, this isn't that big of a problem, but in multiplayer, the games might last longer and accelerating the encounter deck might be a bad idea. But we'll see. I have to play test it out. A strong card for 
sure. Next we have Hexbolt. There are actually, this is the second uh, deck that has four copies of one card in it. So there are four copies of Hexbolt in the deck. Hexbolt is a two cost event, spell superpower, hero action, discard the top three cards of the encounter deck. For each card discarded this way, that has boost icons equal to zero, deal two damage to an enemy. One, remove two threat from a scheme. Two, draw one card or three plus, place a status card on a character. And the hex bolt can be committed as a mental result. So this is an interesting card. Uh, I think for you to utilize this card the maximum, you have to be mindful of uh, which kind of boost icon sets does the encounter deck have in it. So if you know there are a lot of, uh, for example, one, uh, one boost icon part, it is a good card for removing threats. Or maybe there are a lot of uh, two boost icons, so you draw a lot of cards with the hex bolt. But uh, you might hit many of the same abilities or different abilities, and it's <laughs> pretty chaotic. And I think that is the way Scarlet Witch is meant to be played. But uh, this is an interesting card, so we're really interested to see it in action. Uh, next we have Molecular Decay, and there are three copies of this card in the deck. Molecular Decay is a three cost event. Attack, spell, hero, attack, uh, hero action, attack, deal five damage to an enemy, and discard the top two cards of the encounter deck. For each boost icon discarded this way, deal one additional damage to that enemy. Okay, well, it's a three cost um, attack event uh, with uh, guaranteed five damage, but if you're super lucky, you could hit uh, two cards with a total of six boost icons, for example, and deal 11 damage with this. So it might be really good, but it might be mediocre. Then we have uh, Warp Reality. It's a one cost event. There is one copy in the deck. It's a spell, superpower, hero interrupt. When an encounter card is revealed from the encounter deck, cancel all of its effects and discard it. Discard cards from the top of the encounter deck equal to the number of boost icons on that card and warp reality can be committed as a physical resource. Well, uh, a pretty strong card. We'll, we'll have to see uh, how that functions. Uh, next we have a support. It's Agatha Harkness. Uh, one cost support. It's a persona. Alter ego action. Exhaust Agatha Harkness. Look at the top three cards of your deck. Add one of those to your hand and place the rest of them but to the bottom of your deck in any order. And Agatha Harkness can be committed as a mental resource. Okay, well, uh, this is a good card if you are fishing for a specific card, so you can try to find it. Uh, just hope that you won't hit all of your cards that you are needing right at that moment, because two of them will go underneath your deck. But, again, that does, doesn't matter if you have a, an ability to shuffle your deck, for example, playing uh, some... Well, for example, playing uh, Protection or, and having Brother Voodoo in your deck and using Brother Voodoo, you could just shuffle your deck and get those cards back somewhere else than bottom of your deck. But, it's a good... Way. This is a good card to fish for a specific card from your deck. Next we have Magic Shield. And there are three copies of Magic Shield in the deck. Uh, Magic Shield is a one cost upgrade. Spell Hero Interrupt. When a, friend, uh, when a friendly character would take any amount of damage, discard Magic Shield to prevent three of that damage. So uh, it's a good and yeah, and it can be committed as a strength, uh, our physical resource. Okay, well uh, this allows you to uh, 
block with an ally and maybe if that ally isn't taking that much damage from a villain attack you could use magic shield to save that ally for later and of course defend scarlet witch from the enemy attacks so a good card to keep your uh, hero healthy the last uh, set card for Scarlet Witch is Scarlet Witch's Crest. It's a two-cost upgrade. It's an item. There is one copy in the deck. It reads, interrupt. When a boost icon on an encounter card are counted, exhaust Scarlet Witch's Crest, increase or decrease the number of boost icons on that card by one for this count. And it can be committed as an energy resource. So this is a good card to have in play when you're playing with Scarlet Witch because then you can manipulate the amount of boost icons you can see and this is at least one way to get a boost count to 3 plus so you use this for a 3 boost icon uh, encounter card to get it to 4 and deal even more damage with for example uh, molecular decay Okay, well, those are the hero-specific uh, hero cards. Next, let's look at the justice cards that come in Scarlet Witch's deck. So, we have first Speed, Thomas Shepard. Uh, Speed is a four-cost uh, four ally with two sword and one attack. Avenger uh, with four health. Uh, response after Speed towards ready him, limit once per round, and speed can be committed as a physical resource. So right away this is quite similar to the Quicksilver ally that you can ready once per round. Um, the exception is that you have to thwart and then you can ready speed, but the Quicksilver ally you can ready him uh, once per phase so you can do it multiple times. So uh, really liking this ally because uh, we are lacking some adventure allies. So now we have at least one more. Uh, next we have Beacon and it, it, uh, he is another adventure ally. Uh, so Beacon is William Kaplan, two cost ally with one thwart and one attack. Avenger with three health. Response. After Wiccan Thwarts, discard the top card of the encounter deck. For each boost icon discarded this way, deal one damage to an enemy. And Wiccan can be committed as a mental resource. Okay, well, um, a way to deal damage. Not super exciting, but interesting at least. Uh, next we have uh, Crisis Averted. And of course there is three copies in the deck. Crisis Averted is a three cost event. Uh, thwart, hero action thwart, remove 6 threat from the main scheme. If you paid for this card using a mental resource, this thwart ignores the crisis icon. So with this event you can bypass the crisis side schemes and keep the main scheme from advancing if you are having trouble removing the side schemes, for example. So not super exciting, but really strong way to remove a lot of uh, threat from the main scheme. Next we have multitasking. Yeah, multitasking is one cost event. Thwart, hero action port, remove two threats from a scheme. If you paid this card using a mental resource, remove two threats from a different scheme. And it can be committed as a physical resource. So first off, I'm really liking this card. Uh, it's a one cost event with, that can remove a, a total of four threats uh, divided from two different schemes. And uh, just thinking that Miss Marvel really will like this card because you can double play it. And uh, yeah, really interesting. Feels like a good card. And then we have. Uh, Swift Retribution. Uh, we have three copies of this, of course, and it's a one-cost event. Attack, hero action, attack. 
the villain schemes deal four damage to the villain. And this can be committed as a mental resource. So, uh, on the contrary to other justice events, this is an interesting one. So, if you're certain villain scheming won't uh, trigger the, or advance the main scheme, this is a okay way to deal damage to the villain. I really have to play test this, and I feel like this is better in multiplayer than in a true solo, where you might accidentally lose the game with this card if you play it in the wrong uh, moment. But we'll see. Uh, the last new card for justice in this pack is Turn the Tide. It's a zero cost event. Attack, response, attack. After your hero thwarts and removes all threat from a scheme, deal 3 damage to an enemy. And there are of course 3 copies in the deck. And you can commit this as a, basic, uh, as a energy resource. So, if you are thwarting a lot with your hero, as you usually are with justice, you can use this to deal some damage while you're thwarting. So, an okay card and uh, zero cost is really uh, good as you don't have to have cards to be able to play this if you have this as a last card for example and we of course have some previously seen cards like two copies of the power of justice and two copies of heroic intuition then we have uh, the first the basic card, so Order and Chaos, uh, it's a one cost event, it's a team up, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, max one per deck, hero interrupt, when a treachery card is revealed from the encounter deck, cancel it when revealed effect, then deal two damage to the villain, and it can be used as a physical resource. So, not gonna talk about this that much, it's uh, the same card as that came in uh, uh, Quicksilver, and I think that's a good card if you have both of the characters in play. Then we have uh, Spiritual Meditation. It's a zero-cost event. Spell play only if your identity has the mystic trait. Uh, so the only heroes at the moment are Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange who can play this action. Draw two cards, choose and discard one card from your hand. The, and it can be committed as a, as a mental resource. So this is a really good card to uh, cycle your deck, so you can find the cards you really are needing and get rid of cards that are not maybe needed in your specific situation. Then of course we have the trio of the energy, card, energy genius and strength resource cards that come almost in all of your packs. Uh, next up, let's look at uh, the obligation. So, uh, contrary to other heroes, uh, Scarlet Witch comes with two obligation cards. So, Slipping Sanity. Slipping uh, Sanity is an obligation. Uh, give to the Wanda Maximoff player. You may flip to Alter Ego form, choose Exhaust Wanda Maximoff, remove Slipping Sanity from the game or discard the top 5 cards of the encounter deck for each star icon in the boost area, discard it this way, place one threat to the main scheme, discard this obligation. And it has 3 boost icons. So uh, this could be really nasty, or this might do nothing if you just discard it. So not sure what's the uh, function of having 2 in the set, but maybe it, it will become clear once I get playing with Wanda. Okay, and uh, next we have the Nemesis Luminous. Uh, Luminous is a minion with two scheme and two attack with and five health. She is elite. Post response after Luminous activates against you, discard the top card of the encounter deck. If two or more boost icons were discarded this way, deal yourself one and count card. And uh, Luminous has two boost icons. Okay, well, uh, some 
interesting mechanics there. So again, accelerating the encounter deck, and also if you hit uh, high boost icon counts, you get extra encounter cards, which ca can be <laughs> bad even in standard if you get too many encounter cards. Then we have the next evolution. It's a side scheme. Uh, increase the number of boost icons on each encounter card by one. Um, it has it comes into play with two uh, threats, and it has two boost icons. So, uh, depending on your situation, if you are trying to hit high boost icon counts with some card, this might be good. But I think uh, the lower end of the Hex bolt card was zero that deals damage. So if you're trying to damage the villain, this is actually preventing you from doing that because you can't hit zero uh, boost icon cards that because every card has one with this. So I think this is a priority to remove usually. Uh, then we have a magical suspension. It's an attachment attached to your identity. Each card you play costs one additional resource. Your action exhausts your hero. This card is card and it has two boost icons. So this really slows down your ability to play cards. So you probably want to try and get this removed as fast as possible. And the last card. So there are only four cards in the MS deck because there were two obligations. So the last card is Chaos Manipulation. Treachery, when revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for Luminous and put her in play. Engage with you, discard the top card of the encounter deck. If two or more boost icons were discarded this way, Luminous activates against you. Okay, so uh, if you hit uh, a bad card, Luminous basically gains Quick Strike. Or also, if you're in Alter Ego, uh, Luminous activates and war uh, uh, schemes so this is quite an evil <laughs> evil little treachery card so and it has two boost icons okay uh, well uh, let's next look at the other aspect cards that come in uh, scarlet with hero pack uh, so the aggression card is bro uh, brown beat it's a two-cost event attack. Play only if your identity has the adventure trait, hero action attack. Deal two damage to the villain. Deal X additional damage to the villain to a maximum of three, where X is the e equal to the villain's stage number. So this is in the same set as the other cards that take into account the villain's stage number. So a decent looking uh, attack card. Then we have last stand. It's uh, leadership card. It's a zero cost event with tactic hero interrupt. When an ally you control attacks, it gets plus three attack for that attack. After that attack resolves, discard that ally. So I think this is really strong if you are just about trying to burn down the villain or have to deal with a high health minion. And you have an ally that is near near death either way, so you just boost it, that, that ally up and uh, then attack for high amounts of damage. So, uh, interesting card and we'll be trying that out for sure. And the protection card is bait and switch. This actually has quite awesome art on it. So it's a one cost event ward. Hero action thwart. The villain attacks you, remove four threat from the main scheme. So a really needed card for the for protection. So I'm really excited for this card because uh, protection is lacking a lot of ways to remove threat efficiently. So with this, you can remove threat from the main scheme, and uh, usually you can have other cards that uh, let you deal with the damage that. Uh, the villain will deal to you. So, really interesting. And the last card in the pack is uh, Recuperation. 
it's a two cost event, uh, basic event. Uh, it's an alter ego action, heal damage from your alter ego equal to your recovery, and it can be committed as a physical resource. So I'm just seeing, uh, well, the picture has uh, She Hulk in alter ego form. So I'm thinking She Hulk likes this, uh, Hulk likes this. And uh, maybe some, well, Thor or some other uh, hero that you want to swing with, with the basic attack, really likes this because you can heal and not exhaust in alter ego, so you can swing in the hero form. So, really interesting and exciting pack, in my opinion. Uh, I will definitely be, be sleeving this deck right. After this recording is finished, and we'll play a, a game with the basic uh, pre built justice deck with Scarlet Witch. So, hope you guys like this uh, Hero Pack Focus. Thanks for watching, and until next time.